Namaste everyone. Welcome to Ripples in the Sand, a podcast brought to you by the folks at Drifting Sands Highboon. Here we'll be inviting Highboon poets who have appeared in the journal to both read and discuss their poetry. I am your host Sangeeta Kalarikul. I am a novice in the haikai path and I'm still learning the art of haikun. Now haikun as you know is prose interleaved with haiku which unlike haiku and tanka is titled. In this series of readings I hope we not only get to hear excellent haikun but also learn a little bit more about the form and the creation of the piece. Our first guest in the podcast is Andrew Riutta. Andrew was born and raised in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. He is a father, chef, and writer. His essays, short fiction, and poetry have been published in journals and anthologies. In 2011, his essay The Myths of Manhood was published in a collection of essays for National Public Radio. This I believe on fatherhood. In 2012 he was featured on Public Radio International's Bob Edwards show. He won the 20, 2008 William Shaw Memorial Prize for poetry for his poem Lung Cancer. Welcome Andrew. Hi, thanks for the invitation and I'm happy to be here. Um Before we start off uh, Andrew I just wanted to ask you uh, how long have you been writing uh, the Japanese uh, poetry form Oh I would say I, I I would say I came across an interest in it in probably around 2004 after wow. I uh, one of my well my favorite writer Jim Harrison he had written a book called After EQ and and it was a uh, it was a contemporary asian style and that was sort of what began my my interest in pursuing like haiku and tanka and and so on and so forth mm. did you write free verse before were you into free verse yes i did yes i had written some free verse though i wouldn't say terribly successfully i actually the the asian forms taught me so much about yeah about writing and about concrete you know using concrete language and and telling or showing not telling that that sort mm-hmm. of thing it's a great exercise in that so did you yeah. start writing haibun or did you start with haiku tell no i i started with haiku i started with haiku and i dabbled in the haiku for a couple of years and then uh, at some point i came across the tanka really took i took an interest in that and those mm-hmm. two extra lines for me seemed to add up to a lot whole a lot more leg room than and also just the the more emotional components of of tanka right. as well i I, right. i became and i and i had a, a fair amount of success with that as far as i did a couple of collections of tanka and um and i didn't really have a whole lot of interest in haibun uh, that's great that you're into haibun because uh, all your haibun are i mean the ones that i have read uh, uh i can't profess to have read all of your haibun um but the ones that have been published in distinct sands are absolutely fantastic i really enjoy it. today i believe you you will start off with a haibun of yours published in drifting sands earlier this year in issue 14 titled for Jack Chambers Jr um this haibun has a unique combination of respect and tenderness that's so one thing i really oh, like oh that's really it. i appreciate that cuz that was certainly the aim i think and i really appreciate that cuz i think i i you know watching my dad grow older and and more vulnerable and i really wanted something that could somewhat encapsulate him as a person but also uh his his sacrifices his his mm-hmm. his lasting sacrifice that he continues to you know have to suffer and and also his his resolve within that that he doesn't necessarily feel cheated or uh mm-hmm. you know he's still a very proud marine and I wanted to try to touch on that mm mm-hmm. Okay, wonderful. Let's uh let's listen to for Jack Chambers Jr. Oh, thank you. For Jack Chambers Jr. 
middle of February and outside, the snow just keeps piling up. My father, an old United States Marine, raises his handicap recliner so he can stand for the national anthem playing at the Detroit Red Wings game on television. He doesn't salute, but I can tell that he wants to. After Vietnam, they had him folding flags at funerals for boys whose jawbones had been blown right through their temporal lobes, their very brains. These days, he eats microwave popcorn and listens to gospel songs on his phone. Willie, Billy Strings, classic Dolly Parton. He told me once that his legs have become so contorted and stiff from all the Agent Orange and arthritis, they'll probably have to snap his bones just to fit him into his coffin. But Semper Fi, he said. Holy Bible. A cigarette inside. Flat as roadkill. The, the haiku at the end is such a powerful image. Uh, Holy Bible, cigarette inside. Flat as roadkill. Uh, would you please elaborate on that? Uh, well, it's it's not an uncommon thing. My dad is is Native American, mm-hmm. and it's it's not uncommon in a lot of you know Native American homes to have a mix of symbols as far as some Christian and some some traditional and. Yeah. Uh, and many, many people even thrive with, within that. They don't find a, a conflict at all. They're able to thrive within it. And so it's not an uncommon thing because in, in the Native tradition, tobacco is a sacred, one of the sacred medicines. And um, so it's often given as a gift or, or something similar. And so that's, that's the symbolism there. Oh, I did know that. I did not know that, that tobacco is, uh, I mean, the, the importance of tobacco, uh, the symbolism. Uh, learned yeah. something new. Thank you. So no, now this hyphen uh, was from your latest book, Blessed, Modern Hyphen on Almost Every Despair, from Redmond Press, which was uh, released earlier this year, right? Yeah. Would you like to say something about it? Yeah, I'm. I'm very, you know, very pleased that that, that Red Moon published it, and um, I suppose I wanted it to be a meditation on both light and dark, and uh, but also things like faith and heart, sheer heart, and survival, and uh, all the things, all you know, all the obstacles that we run into every day that sometimes can actually make us stronger, more, more insightful people, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. um, my grandparents struggled and within that, there was just something that my, my grandmother, her, her frugality was just amazing. It was an art form in and of itself. And I wanted this book to capture those, those graces that we sometimes forget. And we or maybe we even miss that maybe right. we even miss. Yeah. And that was the aim of the collection. And with the help of Jim over at Red Moon, I was definitely able to to um, approximate that. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Blessed uh, reads like a soliloquy of experiences and people, and uh, has brilliantly written High Bone. So, would you like to introduce and read your next High Bone from the book? Yeah, sure. Thanks. I am going to read um, A Copper Country Romance. My first girlfriend's name was Wanda. She was born with a missing index finger, though she still had one to point and blame, which she did. But it was never my fault. Blame the morning, for it is here. Blame anyone and anything. Blame the four winds. Blame Ma and Pa. New love screams in the faces of those who devote themselves wholly to its mammalian sense. I glanced up at a robin when I should have been worshipping her 13-year-old curves. I was caught skipping stars across the darkness when she wanted me to focus on her music. This is the dance that twirls itself to the lunatic noises of lust and letdown. 
This is the beautiful sky at dusk, purple as a shiny bruise. Fourth of July sparklers, a shadow of us. Mm. I glanced up at the robin when I should have been worshipping her 13-year-old curse. Oh, so beautiful. There's such a vivid understanding of young love, that time of youth when uh, one is focused on oneself and the time when one is trying to understand oneself. And for most people, it is a struggle. Um, kind of the, the phrase, purple as a shiny bruise, uh, summarizes it, I feel. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I... I... You know, I, I mean, I was recalling off of my own experiences, but I, I wanted I, I, with this particular piece, which, believe it or not, it's a couple years old. And for some reason, that the piece has gotten more and more likable for me personally. But um, I, I, I guess I wanted more than anything to know that with, within all that raw and romantic tension, uh, there's, there is an innocence that's worth mentioning. And I was trying to c- capture that. Um, I was hoping that the piece could could account for some of that 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 innocence. Yes, it's very appealing. I, I love this piece. I really do love this piece. Thank you very um, much. Please do tell us about the title, uh, A Copper Country Romance. Does it refer to where you grew up? Yeah, I grew up in, uh, it's, uh, uh, if you look at Michigan, there's a lower peninsula and an upper peninsula. I was born and raised in the Upper Peninsula, but if you go even further into the, or even higher into the peninsula, there's a place called the Copper Country. It's comprised of, I think, four or five counties. They were very big in the, in, at the turn of the century, very big of, of the this past century, um, very big uh, for copper mining and and. Uh, of course, they're all mostly shut down now, but but uh, mm-hmm. it is still you know, called the Copper Country. So. I see. Okay. Yeah, I absolutely love this, Hyburn. Uh Your depth of understanding people really came through in it. Um, uh, finally, let's listen to one last Hyburn from you. What would you like to read to us next? Oh, I'm going to read one uh, about my grandmother uh, who immigrated from, from Finland to the Copper Country. And um, mm-hmm. very, very beautiful, strong woman. And so I would like to read this. It's called Irene. Mm -hmm. My grandmother must have brought it over with her from the old country, the recipe for making a home. Stacked Bibles and tar paper, a can of lard, then three feet of snow piled on top, a corner for the sewing machine, a spot to hang Jesus, the creak of every door that opens and closes. A word for hope and finish, a stiff finger to break the soil, one apple tree, two daughters, a dead son, a faithful husband, finally, a formica table to roll it all out, to flatten the dimensions, to bring heaven closer to the earth. Endless road, the sky curves into blackbirds. Folks, you've just heard Irene, such a stunning high one from Andrew. I think you ought to see it laid out on the page. Uh, the form is different. There is prose. There is a free verse poetry. And there is the crowning glory, which you see, haiku. Um, so, um, Andrew, many of the high boon in your book, especially for Jack Chambers Jr., uh, comes from a place of profound emotions within the heart. Would you say that having said this in a high boon form is more effective than other forms of expression, like free verse poetry or a song? I, you know, it's a very subjective thing. I, I can mm-hmm. I can speak for myself as far as. Um, when I when I first feel like I, I dearly connected to Haibun, it seemed like just the perfect vessel for, well, as you just said, lots of, of raw emotion and and I don't know, well, maybe because it's not free verse and and I didn't, but I, I you know there's an irony in that it's a traditional form and yet I felt 
even more free than with than with free verse. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes any sense, if that makes any sense, and and it became whatever I needed it to be, and that made it just so incredibly beautiful. Yeah, and continues continues to. It's it's so enjoyable reading your your work. Uh, well, as you know, I am a novice, and like many of our listeners, I'm sure I'm looking to understand this form of poetry better. Now, since you've been writing Heisen for so long, in your experience, what do you think is the most important aspect of uh, writing a Heisen? The as, do you mean technically or emotionally? Yes. Oh, or both. Both, yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, one of the rules of thumb that I've always had is um, don't be afraid to take chances, take risks, because you can follow all the rules and do all the things that you ex- thought or, or believe are expected of you. And you're, there's still going to be people that criticize. And and that being said, you, you may as well just do what you feel and take chances. And I mean, I don't mean be uh, gratuitous. I'm not, I don't mean that. I'm just saying, you take emotional risks and be vulnerable. Don't be afraid mm-hmm. to be vulnerable. Uh, yeah. Too many people want to, or I, I shouldn't say that, but I, I mean, I myself, I, I tried to t- tap dance maybe around certain moods and feelings and emotions. And I got to a point where the older I get, it's just not very practical anymore to, <laughs> to skirt around, to skirt around my emotions. And so yeah. Yeah. at the risk of, at the risk of sometimes looking and sounding like a fool. <laughs> oh wow, that that's that's great advice. That's great advice. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So, uh, thank you for reading uh, all uh, your work. Uh, but before, oh, thanks. So, that was a real I, joy, and thanks for thanks for the great questions, and it was really great. Uh, I have one more question for you. What are you currently okay. working on? Uh, are you working on anything right now? Any project or? Just Not really it. working on anything currently, uh, other than wanting to promote my book a little bit more, and and yeah. um, I'm still I'm still learning, I'm still gathering my own relationship with Haibun, and and um, I wanna I want to uh, I want to be able to stretch it as much as I can with within within my own subjective emotions, I suppose, and mm-hmm. and. It's already for for me. It's provided me with a lot of growth emotionally. It's given me an opportunity to examine myself, and and so it's 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 more than just than just a, a exercise and a literary exercise. It's yeah. it's much more than that. Yeah. You're still a student, you feel of high. I, it's, yeah, it's just it's it's uh again the, the the fear or the lack of fear I suppose and and being vulnerable and and uh, I think that's that's been my, more my approach to high if I had a, a a particular approach it would be that I'm I'm willing to be vulnerable and again like like I said even be come across as foolish sometimes and. If it, if it means that I'm able to uh, get at certain emotions or certain memories or yeah. uh, or even sketching sketching people sketching the people that have been in my life and that, which is a big part of my collection is so much of it yeah. is is made up of, pe- of people yeah and so all these things all these things I they get thrown into the into the high bun kitty and um. Just about every day, it gives birth to something new. I would say. All right, wonderful. Thank you. That was remarkable. Thank you, Andrew, for kickstarting. Thanks very much for the invitation and and the great questions. <laughs> you kickstarted our podcast at a blast. So you know what we feel that reading words is a wonderful experience in itself, but reading out the words aloud is better. It's quite like tasting the words, right? And then hearing the word, uh, the hearing the poetry read by the poet takes that experience to a completely different level. So thank you again, Andrew. And we look forward to reading your work, uh, next work.
Do you Thank you, and I look forward to uh, hearing more with the, uh, with the series. I, hear, I look forward to hearing other artists and authors as well. That was Andrew Ryuta reading some of his high bone. His book, Blessed, Modern High Bone on Almost Every Despair, is available from the Red Moon Press. Many of his high bone are featured in Drifting Sands. Feel free to go to the website and browse the previous issues. The music for Ripples in the Sand was from Grain Art by Richard Grain, and the podcast is edited by Richard Grain. This is Sangeeta Kalarikul. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for the next episode.